Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you so much for joining us. We to seek the blessings of Radha Mata, Radha Shyam Sundar, Krishna Balara, Bal Gopal, Gonitai Shila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj, and the assembled devotees so that we can continue with the Bhagavad Gita. We are done the chapter one yesterday, at least an overview. Um, and we saw so six lessons from the chapter one. Now let's have a look at chapter two, which is entitled The contents of the Gita summarized. So we'll do a quick summary of the chapter first. Um, second chapter is a succinct overview of the entire philosophy. So Krishna gives um, basically a, a, an idea of what uh, he's going to speak about to Arjun in the chapter two. So Arjun approaches Krishna in a mood of humility and desperation prompting Krishna to present the most fundamental aspects of spiritual wisdom regarding our real identity and our duties in life. So Krishna immediately takes Arjun out of the uh, bodily concept of life and places Arjun on the spirit identity of our, uh, our spiritual identity. So immediately Krishna does not mess about um, at all. Well, they were in the middle of the battle, <laughs> about to go into battle. Krishna then explains the practical application of such wisdom and concludes by delineating the symptoms of one who has fully realized such truths. In this way, Krishna summarizes the spiritual journey from beginning to end. In one sense, however, there is no end, of course, to the spiritual journey because this is the point at which real life begins. So let's have a look at uh, chapter two. Very, very interesting. Uh, so who'd like to read? Um, uh, Shah Malini, would you like to take the first uh, section? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Sanjaya, text one. Sanjaya said, seeing Arjun full of compassion, his mind depressed. His eyes full of tears. Madhusudan, Krishna spoke the following words. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjun, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets, but to infamy. Text free, O son of Prata, do not yield to this degrading importance. It does not become you. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. Text 4, Arjuna said, O killer of enemies, O killer of Madhu, how can I counteract with arrows in battle men? like Bhish and Drona, who are worthy of my worship. Text five, it would be better to live in, the, in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even the desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. If they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. Prabhu, you need to move. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, got it. No text, oh, sorry. I got it. Text six, nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to leave. Yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield. Text seven, now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered 
unto you. Please instruct me. Text eight, I can find no means to drive away this grief, which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to dispel it, even if I win a prosperous, unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven. Text nine, Sanjaya said, having spoken thus, Arjun, chastiser of enemies, told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight, and fell silent. Text 10, O descendant of Bharat. At that time, Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief-stricken Arjun. Okay. Thank you so much. Very good. That's all right, Bob. So the first part of uh, the chapter and the most important verse in these 10 verses is this one here where Krishna, where Arjun surrenders unto Krishna. And he says, I am your disciple. I'm a soul surrender unto me, you. Please instruct me. Determined not to fight, but simultaneously is torn and confused. Arjun approaches Krishna. I am in dire need of guidance. He humbly submits. Please enlighten me so that I can mitigate my miserable condition. So um, this is uh, where we really stand in this world because we, we are in this world because of uh, our disconnection with the reality, the real place where we belong, spiritual world. So we are in a place where we shouldn't, we don't belong. And that's due to ignorance and we need enlightenment. <laughs> so through Urchun's example, we learn the first fundamental step in spirituality. One must approach a guru who comes in an authentic line lineage of teachers and who has mastered the spiritual art. So now the guru, it's very hard, frankly speaking, to find a bona fide spiritual master. It's very, very, very hard in this world um, because there's so many cheaters, so many people who can't control their senses. So to find a guru, a strong guru is very difficult. I'd say we were very fortunate to find to, what Krishna found for us, Guru Maharaj. And of course, we are in the line of Prabhupada, now, because Prabhupada has given so much shiksha through his books, then he is our shiksha guru. He is our shiksha guru. So you take shelter of Prabhupada, we are under the spiritual guidance. We are protected. We are protected because when somebody writes a book like he has, there's a responsibility on him as well to take us along the journey to the spiritual world. You can't just write a book and have no responsibility. You write a book, you also become responsible for the, for the soul that you are guiding. Even you may not be present in this world, but the responsibility is there because you've, you've given the initial guidance, you've given the guidance through your, your words, through the books. That's why Prabhupada says, I live in my words, in my books, I will be there. So if he's saying that, then there's some uh, reality to it because he's a guru, he's a spiritual master, he's a real bona fide guru. So by taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada through his books, which is what we are doing uh, through the Bhagavad Gita as it is at this moment in time, we are connected in the spiritual lineage. There shouldn't be any doubt of that. Most things in life require guidance an instruction under a qualified teacher and the spiritual discipline is no different. If you want to become a doctor, you have to go to a bona fide uh, college or university which will train you, teach you, give you the uh, appropriate uh, certification and you regard it to be a doctor in due course of time. Of course, after practicing it as well for some time. So spiritual life is no different. We need to have a... a um, 
a proper uh, basis of study through uh, a proper uh, spiritual authority. Otherwise, it's, what's the use of it? It's just like a doctor going to a, a, a maths college and, you know, claiming that he's a, or a, a student in, who wants to become a doctor, goes to a maths college. How can he become a doctor? It's not possible. One may argue that everything they require for their spirituality is contained within. And while this may be true, we still require help to reawaken that pure inner consciousness. So it's a fact. We are spiritual beings. And the Paramatma is right next to us. So um, in that sense, we, we are, uh, we, we, everything is there, what we need within us. But we need help to reawaken that consciousness. As the saying goes, one who accepts himself as a guru <laughs> accepts a fool for a disciple. <laughs> so uh, we don't want to be in that situation. The Lord himself sets the standard. Although he is the absolute truth, all-knowing personality, his omniscient, omniscient, his all-knowing. Still, he accepts a spiritual master when he descends to earth. So what, what more can be said? Guru is required. Guru is important. Guru is needed, necessary for us. And Guru gives us that comfort uh, to be under the shelter of Guru Maharaj. Was, uh, it's so comfortable. It's so good. Because we know he's going to guide us. And uh, he is uh, constantly guiding even he's not physically present, it doesn't matter. His guidance is there and his instructions. There you go. It's Krishna and Balaram in Krishna Vanti at uh, Sandipanimuni's ashram in Ujjain. Okay, so that's the first part. Now let's go to number the second part. Uh, let's see, is there? Seema, are you able to read this, this section of the Gita? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. Would you like to Hare read? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said while speaking these words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who lament. Those who are wise. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Uh, oh, you can't see the whole screen. Yeah, I've, I... seen it, I've seen it. Sorry. Okay. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future. Shall any of us cease to be? As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. O oh, son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of the winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception. Oh, scion of Bharat, 
and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Oh, best among men, Arjun, the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible. For liberation. Okay, excellent. Uh, would you like to continue? Uh, there's there's quite a few more. Yes, certainly. Okay. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existence, there is no change. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. And then it's explained that what does non-existent mean? It means the material body uh, for which there is no endurance and of the eternal, that is the soul, there is no change. And this they have concluded, the great seers of the truth by studying the nature of both the soul and the material body. Text 17, that which pervades the entire body, you should know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. The material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is sure to come to an end. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharat, fight. Mm -hmm. Neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer, neither he who thinks the living entity is the slayer, nor he who thinks the body is slain is in knowledge, for the self slays not, nor is slain. In other words, we cannot be killed, the soul cannot be killed, mm. and we cannot kill. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. You want me to continue? You can, if you want to. I can, if you, if you want me to. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, Bart, how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible, eternal, unborn, and immutable, kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. The soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, nor burned by fire nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. This individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble and can be neither burned nor dried. He is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable, and eternally the same. 
it is said that the soul is invisible, inconceivable, and immutable. Knowing this, you should not grieve for the body. However, if, however, you think that the soul or the symptoms of life will always be born and die forever, you still have no reason to lament, oh, 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 mighty, oh, oh, mighty armed, mighty armed. Oops. And if, one, yeah, carry on, carry on. One who has taken his birth is sure to die. And after death, one is sure to take birth again. Therefore, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. All created beings are unmanifest in their beginning, manifest in their interim state, and unmanifest again when and I highlighted. So what need is there for lamentation? Some look on the soul as amazing. Some describe him as amazing. And some hear of him as amazing. While others, even after hearing about him, cannot understand him at all. O oh, descendant of Bharat, he who dwells in the body can never be slain. Therefore, you need not grieve for any living being. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Very nice reading. Uh, very clear. Uh, I love your... Uh... Uh, the nuance is there. Very good. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So, summary. This is the very first instruction of the Bhagavad Gita by Krishna. He begins by teaching Arjun the most fundamental understanding of spiritual life. This is the very basic and fundamental. Um, as the driver operates a car or as a bird lives in a cage, we, the spirit soul, are similarly utilizing this body. Although living within the body, we simultaneously are different from it, just like the driver in the car is required to operate the car, otherwise the car won't move. But at the same time, the driver in the car are different from each other. So th this... Um, the soul temporarily operating it to perform activities, fulfill our desires and interact with the world around us. So immediately Krishna takes Arjun out of the bodily platform and places him on the spiritual platform. This distinction is the first teaching the Guru imparts. At every moment our bodies are changing. We do not have the same body that we did when we were children but we still remain the same person. What is it that is not changing? So when we go to schools and the opportunity arises, we always explain this concept that we are not the body. And of course, children find that very uh, quite, quite challenging to accept. But then I ask three questions, which really assists in the understanding. The first question is, what, is the size, what was the size of your body when you were born? Right? And I asked them to show me. And the second question is, do you have the same body today? And the answer is always no. The children are, you know, they're quite clued up. And then the third question is, are you, but are you the same person? And the answer is, again, yes, usually. And then I explain that then we can't be the body because you told me yourself that, you don't have the same body that you were born with. So you can't be the body. But you also told me you are the same person. So what is it that we are? 
So then I explained to them that according to the Bhagavad Gita and the very first instruction in this wonderful scripture is that we are the spirit soul, which sustains the body, which uh, is within the body, making it move. And that spirit soul never dies, it lives forever. And then we go on to the concept of reincarnation and karma, etc., which we will talk about later. So what is it that is not changing? It is important to realize our true identity as spirit soul. If we don't, we will continuously undergo the process of reincarnation, accepting unnatural material. Why do we say unnatural? Because our natural situation is we are atma, spiritual spiritual beings but we are a little bit like fish out of water we are in a material world which by its very nature is temporary but we are eternal beings but we're trying to enjoy in a temporary world our eternal nature is not suitable to a temporary nature to this temporary material world so accepting material bodies is very unnatural for us the concept of death is very unnatural to the soul. There is no such thing as death, as Krishna explains in the previous, uh, in the verses, um, especially number, uh, which one is number 20. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. <laughs> so death is an alien concept to the soul. But in this material world, we have to accept death of this material body. And that's alien to the soul. It's, it goes against the nature of the soul. So this is why we have such a tough time um, regarding death. So we will always undergo this process of reincarnation, accepting our natural material bodies. And the subsequent sufferings and distress of life in this material world. This is the material world. There is inevitably going to be um, suffering because of this thing called death. Even if we possess everything we need, the children, family, relatives, money, house, car, job, everything we have. But everything is taken away at the time of death. So... Even we may have very good health, et cetera, et cetera, but death is inevitable. So that is a, uh, so, and once you, once you leave this body, where are you going next? No idea. So suffering and disease, distress is part and parcel of this material world. So what's the lesson to take out of this? Well, of course, to understand we're not this body. How do we do it practically? Well, at least once a day, we can look in the mirror and say to ourselves, I am not this body. I'm pure spirit soul, servant of Supreme Lord, Supreme Soul. At least once a day, we can just, eventually that will sink in. At the moment, our identification it is with this body. And we, we don't necessarily understand that we are spirit soul. And that's a very dangerous position to be in. If we die in that position, we will remain in this world. If we realize who we are, it's, it's called self-realization. Our Guru Mahārāj is very strong on this. Life is meant for self-realization, not sense gratification. So if we can understand who we are, then we are on the spiritual path, on the way back to the spiritual world. So I uh, wanted to stop there and ask if there's any questions. Let's, let me just check. Nothing to lament, yet there can be un, in, un, in the, in, unendurable pain. Why? So Seema, uh, ask your question. You can unmute and ask. Um, uh, well, uh, in... It just seems that the, the statements that the Lord is making mm. kind of feel intellectual. Mm -hmm. and yes, uh, coming from uh, coming from a, 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 I'm not trying to be uh, 
no, that's argumentative or no, anything. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. You can be if you want to. <laughs> we don't mind. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, I, I have no interest in just for the sake of mm. just for the sake of playing um, uh, games. That is not where I'm coming from. Is all I'm trying to say. I am genuinely and and humbly uh, sure. seeking. Sure, of course, um, of course. That, that, um, uh, one moment, please. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Yes. Um, uh, I'm, um, it just feels at the last few verses that you have been uh, reading and discussing, uh, mm. it, it kind of feels like uh, from the intellectual plane, from the thinking plane. And of course, there are lots and lots of different planes. So there is, the, there is like, the, uh, like a felt sense in the body. Um, and and that, that in, in, from that place, the the material and the immaterial yes that's that's okay it's it's true but i don't know if anybody can help me out I'm, well i think are you trying to say that look um uh, there is there is we feel pain in this world right yes but Krishna is saying, for example, text 14, the appearance of the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They're temporary. They'll come and go. But what you're yeah. saying is the pain is there constantly. Yes. Right. And depending on, and even, is it, I think it's somewhere later, um, so, something about... Uh, I can't remember whether it's Bhagavatam or something else, but um, uh, you know, if we if we perform to the best of our capacity, um, uh, uh, live a clean, honest uh, life, and attempt to serve in whatever little capacity we can, uh, then we can hope, uh, perhaps for the for the grace of of uh, taking birth in a family where spiritual life can progress and uh, you know, sufficient means can be there to enable, um, in that sort of context, I'm I'm saying um, there are untold miseries in this world, and we hear of them every day. Uh, if we just open our eyes, we can see yeah. uh, profound cruelty uh, yeah. from one being to another. Correct. And I'm, I don't mean uh, uh, through the through the th through the different species. I'm talking of simply humans. And I know four hundred thousand species of humankind, which is all talking about essentially the evolution of consciousness. That's correct. Um, so what I'm what I'm trying to say is there is a lot of pain in this world. <laughs> in this context of great suffering, yeah. um, this 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 uh, it seems very theoretical. It seems very theoretical. It is. It, it, no, it's, it, not. It, uh, it's not theoretical. No. Okay. It's, no, it's not. It's okay. it's only theoretical if we're studying this uh, as a a subject on its own but if we're studying this uh this this uh conversation between krishna and arjun with a view to develop spiritually then it is not theoretical at all this is um the most practical the most pra there is pain undoubtedly there is pain and this is what Krishna is saying. This material world is full. He says, Ash, uh, Shashwatam Dukhalayam. This world is Shashwatam Dukhalayam. It's full of misery, full of pain. But 
That's why he's putting Arjun immediately on the spiritual plane. He's saying to him that you're looking at it from the basis of the body. And yes, the body is subject to all these pains and sufferings. But you have to remember, he's saying to Arjun, that you're not the body. Because you're identifying with the body, you're going to feel the pain and the suffering. But as soon as you realize that there's no pain and suffering for the soul, you see, he's saying, text number 24, the soul is unbreakable, insoluble, can't be burned or dried, everlasting, is present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable, eternally the same. It can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, nor be burned by fire, moistened by water, withered by the wind. Krishna is giving um, full strength to Arjun to say to him, you will never die. You uh, will never, um, if you realize who you actually are, then you will understand that this world is temporary and it is full of pain, but you are not subject to that same pain. But because you're identifying with this world and you're identifying with this body, you're going to go through all the pain that you're, you're now feeling. Now, to put that into practice, to put that into uh, realized understanding, wisdom, it takes time. No doubt about it. It takes time. Because all of our life, we have been thinking that we are, you know, I am Seema and I'm a woman. I am young. I am old. You know, um, I'm this person's son or this person is my son or, or daughter. We've, we've got all these attachments. They're all related to the body. We're so heavily entangled in this world. Uh, and that's why we feel all the pain and suffering that comes along with temporary relationships. But as soon as we come onto the spiritual platform, which is what Krishna is immediately bringing you to that spiritual platform, he's not messing about. He's not saying to him, oh, yeah, don't worry, just do your fight and you know, it'll be fine. He's saying, no, understand. All of these kings before you, they lived in the past, they're living now, they're going to live in the future. And the same with you, the same with me. Right? That's verse number 11. So he, he's immediately taking Arjun off this bodily platform. And that's where we need to be in our life at some point. It'll take time. It'll take time, take time to understand, keep uh, reading, keep uh explaining to ourselves, listen to the explanations of this part of the Gita especially, it'll sink in slowly, 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 slowly. And then we'll begin to realize, become a little bit detached and we'll see things from a spiritual perspective. And we'll see things that are happening in our life which normally would cause us great pain and great distress. We realize actually, hey, this is nothing to do with me. Yes, in this current body, that relationship is there, but it's temporary. It's not going to break me, the soul. Yes, it's painful to this body. It's painful because I am conditioned. It's painful because I am attached. But I know I am spirit soul, and actually, this pain is not really there. Does that make sense, Seema? Prabhuji, yes. But mm. at the same time, if I may humbly... Sure. Um, uh, uh, the body is is a very serious place. In itself. But it's only a vehicle. It's only a vehicle. It's only a... yes, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. It's a vehicle. But the fact is that that um, it it is it is through the vehicle and capacity of the body that we are able to. Uh, attempt to evolve and develop no, our no, consciousness. No, no, this is where if we confine ourselves, if we confine ourselves to thinking that we're limited by the body, then we are limited. That's because we are attached to the body. That's where we're thinking with the body. But the soul is beyond the body. I know, I'm not saying, I don't, I completely agree. I, I'm not 
Mm. Maybe I'm not explaining myself. Of course, I completely agree with what you said. I, I wasn't. Um, mm. I wasn't quibbling with that. I'm simply saying that the the body is a vehicle to take action. For the soul to take action, if you wish. Um. Yeah, but it, it doesn't, it's not limited by the body. This is what I'm trying to I say. Didn't say. I didn't say limited. It's interesting you're, you, you're, you, you're bringing in the word limited. I'm not using the word But what limited. you're saying is the, is the vehicle, it's the only thing the soul is can do is with the body, through the body. No. No, no, I disagree because because I I know from personal experience and I, 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 I believe all of us know from our personal experiences that we are able to travel uh, to all sorts of um, planes and and yeah, places. We're not limited by um, the we, out, we, we can outside go away. of the body. Yeah, so we can go away. I, I, I agree. Uh, so the pain, but, and, um, whatever it's not just the pain, the, the, body, body, the yeah. body is a vehicle, but, but it is also a very subtle vehicle. No, it's um, not. It's a gross vehicle. There is a subtle vehicle that we also have within us. But we're yes, looking I... at the gross vehicle. But you see, I think you're thinking that the gross vehicle, um, because it suffers pain, the soul is limited by that. No, I'm not. I'm not saying limited. And what is I'm the saying, what is the point the, you're making? That I guess. I guess if I give an, uh, a little analogy, um, if we if the tide is coming in at the shores of the sea and we are standing there, we are fine. But if we go in a little way into the sea, as the tide is going out, we will not be able to easily uh, go against the tide and come back to the shoreline. Yes? Yeah, but what's that going to do with the body? And it depends. If you're a swimmer, you can. If you know the message of the Gita, if you can swim in this world through the knowledge of the Gita, then the tide will not be a limiting factor, will not hinder you in your progress. This is the point. Okay. okay. It goes, this Bhagavad, what the Gita does, it takes us away from the material plane. We no longer, if we get it right, we no longer need to worry about the body and the pains and the grief the body is going through the reason being we no long is okay i'll give you an analogy myself if you're walking um between two huge buildings you'll be thinking wow these buildings are huge but if you if you're in a helicopter and you see those two buildings you think oh, that's very small buildings so similarly if we are Thinking we're the body, we'll see our problems as two huge buildings. But if we understand we are the soul and we're looking beyond, we're looking from the helicopter view, those problems suddenly become very small. So what Krishna is giving to Arjun is a, um, the roadmap, how to live in this world without being worried or affected by the pains and the Grief around us. That's the point. He's giving him the tools by which he equips himself. He's not going uh, to equip himself, so he's not worried or burdened by the different uh, elements of this material world. And this is where we, we um, can gain so much from these, this conversation between Arjun and Krishna. And not then worry ourselves about oh this person said this to me oh i've got this disease i've got that disease i've got this pain and this person's not talking to me and you know those things suddenly become very immaterial and even don't matter because we understand we're only we are spirit soul and this is, these things are only affecting the body not me as a soul do you see where that's coming from, Seema? Yes, I appreciate what you are saying, Prabhuji. Um, but at the same time, we notice that if someone is suffering, we hopefully 
can try to bring some. It's uh, not. It's not comfort. somebody else. We don't. We we're not looking at others at the moment. If we can get our thinking right. But that's this is the this is the crux. Now you've said it, Prabhuji. This is it. If we can get our thinking right, the fact is, at least. Sorry, I don't mean to sound so heavy. Just for my own experience, um, I'm recognizing that there are many, many planes. And if we can get our thinking right, is definitely one plane. But There's there are two planes. Other planes. There's only two planes. That's Krishna's making it very clear. There's the material plane and there's the spiritual plane. There's nothing in between. If we're on the material uh concept of life attached to the body and attached to what others are feeling and others are ha what's happening to others we're on the material platform the other platform is which is where krishna's taking origin to the spiritual platform there's only two planes so we need to decide which plane are we going to be in which plane do we want to go into we may well be in the material plane at this moment in time, but our aspiration is to follow Krishna's instructions and guidance and get onto the spiritual plane. Then there's no more buts, you know? Then we'll understand that we are spiritual souls and this material world is um, a temporary place of full of misery. And we won't, we won't, we won't be any, any under any illusion about this world. Then there's no more buts and ifs, you know. <laughs> thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Not... Thank you for the discussion. It was very good. Enjoyed that. Was, uh -oh. I just, I just want to say that it. Uh, I'm happy to bow out, but it does not, it does not, it does not cover the, the areas that I was trying to explore and I explore not for the sake of um, uh, verbal gymnastics, but, but uh, I mean, you said, yes, you know, of course, the spiritual plane, the material plane only two planes, but I know that they can be, uh, they can be a major accident, for example, and, and whether it is for moments or for longer, the, the, the soul can disconnect from the body, uh, for example. Um, I, I don't know, with, with, your, with your argument of spiritual or material, I don't see quite where that we, scenario... We're talking about the level of consciousness. Krishna is talking about consciousness here. There's yes, two I, levels. I, 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 there's only two levels. There's the material consciousness and there's the spiritual consciousness. There's nothing in between. The soul is meant to be on the spiritual consciousness level. But if the soul remains at the material consciousness level, then, then this is where the soul will continue to, to reside in this material world. Whether there's an accident and there's a small disconnect. In fact, there's host, there's many operations where people, the soul comes out as has a body out of body experience, but there's still yeah, only two spheres. And it there's happens a great spheres. deal. Yeah, but there's only two spheres. There's still only two spheres. There's the material sphere and there's a spiritual sphere. You can't escape that because that's what Krishna has given. That's what Krishna is identifying here. There's the material sphere and there's spiritual sphere it's very very straightforward krishna's there's no mental gymnastics needed here it's krishna's very very clear in how he's delineating um the, the spiritual uh, sphere and the material sphere to arjun very very clear we don't have to play mental gymnastics it is very very clear seema I, and I, have another I, read I have another read Try to understand. Um, as... This is my favorite chapter, Prabhuji. I, I've, I, I've read this many, many times, and I've, I've embraced. Uh, it is my favorite. As I say, my dearest chapter. Somehow, I don't know why, but it's my favorite chapter. <laughs> even, the, even, even beyond the others. And I know there are beautiful chapters, but this one, 
I am drawn yeah. to in a way that is outside of my 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 conscious volition even. And I've not had a problem, but um then be clear, be very, very clear what is Krishna saying. Krishna's ex explaining very, very in in no uncertain terms, right? This is the first instruction Krishna says. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor any of us shall cease to be. Very eternal. I fully agree. Yeah. And, I don't have and a then he says that. it's the body, this embodied soul. See, then he talks about the second sphere. Immediately, the embodied soul goes from boyhood to youth to old age. But the soul, he says, he, he will pass into another body. So don't worry about this business about death. Don't worry about accidents. Don't worry about out-of-body experiences. You see, then he, he, he's very, very, very clear in his uh, explanation of the position of the soul in this world. And there's only two positions. There's no other position. Believe me. I've read this a million times. It's been explained I a million you, times. I'm, I'm <laughs> grateful for your kindness. And, and I don't want to take away from from everyone's understanding yeah. uh, you can have a chat I, uh, out of um, out of yeah, uh, I would be very grateful I was going to say exactly that Prabhuji you, you happy you, to do um, that happy to I would do be that. very very grateful for that if you have time after this class I would be grateful um, or um, or whatever no, no, um, it may not be after this uh, we got another okay. satsang after this oh, sorry. Sorry. maybe okay. tomorrow I'll, are you I, are you in any of our groups um uh, uh, I I think I'm in one group. Uh, so message uh, me, and then we can. So then I got your number, and then we can connect. Huh? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. you thank sorry. You. Sorry, everybody. No, oh, no, no. Don't be sorry. It's good to have a discussion, and your mood was very nice. Nice to discuss. So very good. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's stop there. Uh, Hare Krishna, everybody.